Hi everyone. So in this particular video, we will talk. We will be talking about uh, Kubernetes interview questions. So these are the questions which uh, are now being uh, asked in the DevOps interview, or if you are appearing for the cloud inter cloud engineer profile, or if you are appearing for the DevOps engineer profile, or the platform engineer, or any uh, other profiles which are in the market like information system engineer or other uh, senior DevOps, DevOps, your cloud engineer, platform engineer, cloud ops engineer correct any any kind of uh, this uh, uh, tech stacks where uh, you you are now being introduced with the kubernetes or you are being uh, asked uh, the questions based on the kubernetes correct so there you will be encountering uh, such questions uh, then those will come from your uh, kubernetes perspective correct so we will see and if you want to uh, check out other videos and uh, you want to uh, learn about other uh, technical contents are real related to your AWS, related to your Terraform and, and other uh, topics like Docker, uh, uh, CICD parts. So that kind of questions I have posted on my YouTube channel that you can watch out uh, in other videos. And you can also learn other contents like uh, VPC endpoint, uh, the complete tutorial over the Terraform. So that is available on the video. Here, we will be specifically uh, talking about the Kubernetes where the first question starts with, where does PV exist in, in your Kubernetes, correct? So if you have gone through the Kubernetes world and if, if you have learned about that, you will understand PV stands for your persistent volume, correct? It is used for the storage, the data storage and uh, other things. How all these things work that uh, we can see in the detail uh, later on. But here to one, uh, answer this, uh, you can see, uh, you can simply say that PV uh, exists on the cluster level itself. Why this PV uh, can be utilized to give the storage to the different pods? Like you can create the PVC, persistent volume uh, claim. You can do that and there you can... Uh, you can give the configuration that how much storage you want, how much uh, resources you would require. That will be claimed out of the PV, correct? So you can uh, learn about the PV and you can answer. Uh, you can uh, make your answer accordingly. Then your second question comes as, in, what is the difference between ingress and the service? Like uh, just compare these two uh, terminology in the Kubernetes world, ingress versus service. So if you have uh, read about this uh, and if you are aware about this, service are of um, different types. It's either of your uh, cluster IP, either it's of the load, bal load balancer type or the node port type. Correct. So there are uh, different functionality for the services which routes your traffic up to the ports while the ingress is used for routing your traffic based on the path, based on the host, correct? So it routed your traffic to the service and from the service, it goes to the port. So it all depends on the setup, how you have done the setup. So ingress is a different components and the equivalent service is a different component. Then your third uh, question comes as replica set versus the deployment, correct? So if you have gone through this as well, deployment is used for uh, like if you have to run a particular container or if you have to run uh, certain uh, things, correct? You write down all the configuration related to your liveness, related to your uh, readiness, related to your the image, which image will be used to uh, deploy the, your container, correct? To run your application. Then uh, your <clears throat> load by then your replica set can be used for uh, writing down the or controlling the number of ports according uh, which will be associated with the deployment, correct? So replica set, we, you can call it as a subset of the deployment. Then your fourth question comes as difference between load balancer and the ingress. This one also you can uh, define uh, according to yourself. And uh, load balancer, if you are talking about in terms of your uh, cloud perspective, it will be uh, AWS, uh, if you are using the AWS cl cloud, it can be your uh, your application load balancer or the network load balancer. And ingress can be used to uh, route your traffic within the Kubernetes. So that's the component of the Kubernetes. If you deploy ingress controller on your uh, cluster level, this ingress controller can also launch a load balancer that in the, your AWS cloud, if you are uh, interacting with the AWS, correct. And this load balancer can route your traffic to the ingress controller and from ingress controller to the different ingresses. So you can learn about this uh, these two topics as well, load balancer and ingress. Then your fifth question comes as SSL cert, uh, cert, 
uh, SSL certificate set up uh, through load balancer. So if you have a uh, one application, just suppose that abc.com and that is not secured. And if you have to make this abc.com as a secured one, so you will be imp uh, implementing the SSL certificate there, correct? So how can you set up the SSL certificate over the load balancer, whether you will uh, use an external license to do the setup or you will be using the certificate from the certificate manager, which is the one of the service of the AWS. You can learn about these two things and uh, you can make your answer accordingly. Then your uh, sixth question is coming, how to end HTTPS on the LB? It's uh, similar to the fifth question, like uh, you have to make your uh, HTTP request secure so make it secure you will have to enable the ssl certificate so that whenever the requests are coming from outside that should go up to the load balancer and from there uh, it will flow inside the cloud itself or the cluster itself correct so now uh, you can learn uh, this fifth and sixth questions together and uh, you can make answer accordingly then your seventh question is coming how to create secret so if uh, the question is specific to your kubernetes Right. Now we are learning about the Kubernetes one only. So you can use the kubectl commands to create the secret and uh, you can like uh, you can uh, have the TLS kind of secret. You can pass the uh, pass the key and the value that you can do or you can uh, the different types of secret. You can app mode. So you can create the different kind of secrets. And uh, related to secret, one more question comes in uh, when talking about the AWS cloud as well. When to use the Kubernetes secret and when to use the AWS secret manager. So if your application requires the credentials within the cluster itself, you can use the Kubernetes secret. And Kubernetes secret is also uh, encrypted, Base64 encry encrypted. So you can utilize, if you have to utilize all the credentials which you can store in the secret within the cluster itself. But if you have to access the credentials or the details uh, outside the cluster as well, then you can store it in the secret manager. So based on your use cases, you can either use the AWS secret manager or you can use the Kubernetes secret. Then your uh, eighth question comes uh, stages of Maven. There are multiple uh, stages of the Maven from the test, build, deploy, all those package and other uh, stages. You can learn about this as well. Then uh, just to check whether you have worked with the Kubernetes or not, uh, the interviewer might ask you the what's the version of the Kubernetes you have used. So you might be using the 1.24 or the 1.27 or the latest one which has come into the market that you can uh, tell uh, them. Then your next question comes is what is the PV and PVC difference? So the first questions and the question number 10 becomes the similar one. Where does PV exist? If you learn about this PV, you can learn about the PV and PVC difference as well. So PVC is on the cluster level while PVC is not on the cluster level. It can be within a namespace and it can be particularly to uh, based on, it can be associated with, directly with the pod, correct? And based on the the requirements or the configuration what you have made into the pvc a uh, new pv can be created or if the pv exists already in the it can utilize the resources accordingly correct then uh, the 11th question comes is how to write deployment file so you can uh, learn about writing the deployment file you can uh, check out the template which is available on the Kubernetes documents as well and uh, you can practice writing API version, writing the kind, writing the metadata, writing the specifications and the templates and the container name, image image name and correct. So all those configurations you can learn about that and you can practice to write deployment files, demand set files, stateful set files, replica sheet or config map, correct? And how to create secret, writing the files, correct? The YML file itself. So you can learn about all these things. Then your next, next question comes is what is demand set and uh, stateful set? So you can learn about the differences between these two. Or like if you deploy any uh, daemon set, it will allocate uh, one pod at per node, correct? So and the stateful set is used for the uh, use cases where you have to store the data, correct? For that, you use the stateful set. A stateful set provide all the pods in the kind of index. Like it will start, from, uh, it will end with the 0, 1, 2, correct? So it will be in a particular order, while the demand set will not be in a particular order. So there are multiple differences. You can learn about that as well. Then your third question, uh, sorry, 13th question has become how does pods communicate across the different namespaces? How to enable and disable? So by default, 
that uh, all the communication between the different namespaces are allowed within the cluster itself, correct? But to make the in, uh, communication uh, between the different namespaces, you have to use the particular syntax as well. So there is a particular syntax, svc.cluster.local and uh, other attributes. If you have to make the communication between the pod or between the two different services which are in the different namespace, you can write your syntax. You can check out the proper syntax for uh, this 13th question as well. You can write the network policy to enable and disable. Correct. Then your 14th question uh, comes as how to make sure existing pods are distributed across all the nodes uniformly. Either uh, you can use the node affinity to define to uh, to distribute all the ports and uh, across all the nodes uniformly or you can use this uh, like uh, based on the affinity based on that if you can deploy the daemon set it will deploy all the uh, each and every ports on a different different nodes correct or you can use the anti pod affinity so that if one pod is assigned to one node so next pod will not be assigned to the similar node it will be assigned to a newer node correct so that you can uh, you can implement and that will help you. So to learn about, uh, you can learn more about this uh, pod affinity, pod anti-affinity, node affinity and other components, correct? Then your 15th question comes as what is the sidecar container? So there are uh, different kind of containers which you can run. Uh, there are There is a main container, there is a init container, then there is a sidecar container. Sidecar container is basically used for uh, which the container which can run into the parallel of your main container. You are running your main application with the help of container and then you have to extract some data or you have to run, uh, you have to monitor that main container or you have to grab some matrix out of that. So you can run a side container and that will run into the parallel of your main container. Correct? Then your 16th question comes as different deployment strategy in Kate. So the answer is also written rolling update, blue, green, canary and uh, other uh, deployment strategy few more deployment strategy are there so you can learn about that as well so that's all uh, in today's video we will be talking more about the different topics and uh, dip, uh, main important questions which are being asked in the devops interview questions or the cloud ops engineer question so till the time uh, you just try to learn about all these topics and uh, put any comments if you want to uh, get into get any kind of details of these topics or if you want to learn about anything so that will be helpful for us to uh, create uh, to make another video on the similar things so what uh, you require so till the time thank you bye bye